Hello. An empty scene? No, not really. Let's run it. There's not a single keyframe in here. Let me show you what's under the hood here. We have in the outline, and not only the particles, that's the ones you just see here, but also a polygon sphere, which is hidden. Let's unhide it by Shift H. So the sphere sits here. The sphere is actually emitting the particles. And the sphere is making that elliptical motion right now, and then the swinging left and right. With the sphere selected I um, choose the tab P sphere and here I have two pink entries here and one is the translation in X which is this one which it currently does and the other one is the translation in Y this is the up and down and in the combination of the two I get the ellipse so let's have a look what's going on with the translation in X. Right mouse click, edit expression. And here you see an expression, and it's basically the same expression with, um, with the Y parameter. If the time is smaller than 10 seconds, then that sphere should up, Y is up, should swing with a sine function. And 10 times sign of time means that it should swing not very small, like this, but quite large, elongate much longer, plus, minus, and 10. And if the time is uh, longer than 3, that means after 3 seconds, the sphere X translation, that is the left right translation, so it should start swinging with a cosine function of time. So we have two conditions here. If the time is less than 10 seconds, uh, it should swing uh, up and down. If the time is more than three seconds, it should swing only to the uh, it should swing to the right and once it's um, over 10, it will only swing to the left and right. So let's make this longer now. If time is less than well 30, um, and let's start the X swinging. Let's start it at the second of 10. So let's edit it, this and let's see what's coming out of it. So we're swinging up and down now because we're under 30 seconds. But at 10 seconds now we have the additional motion in X and both together make that swinging ellipse motion. which will stop at second 30 and we'll only have that swinging to left and right that's it so this is quite amazing with just four lines we can achieve such a such an impressive um, goal uh, let's create a new scene and I'll show you uh, another condition. New scene, don't save. We create a sphere and we need to go to that tab, the polygon sphere. Here we have the translation, rotation, etc. We stick to the trans translation to make things simple. So right here we type in equals 10 times sign of time. Don't forget to uh, use the for the time the round brackets so we press enter now so we have that swinging motion now up and down now we can edit the expression with a right mouse click and it's right here so let's make a condition now let's just copy this with a middle mouse button I can drag it into here and we type in X. So if the position to the right and left of the polygon sphere is 
larger than 10 units then the polygon sphere should swing with a sign of time so um, if the polygon sphere is more than 10 units to the right it should swing if it's sitting sort of in the center here it should not swing does that work it sure does let's let's extend the frame range to 2000 and what we'll do now is I put this window to the side for a second um, <clears throat> we're going to FX here and all to the right we have this tab and this tab uh, lets us uh, move the object interactively while the animation is playing so let's try this out so you see it's playing back now let's move this to the right and now we have that swinging motion I move it back it sits there and now it starts swinging that's exactly the position 10 here now with a new scene we try a more complex conditional statement it's still easy I think but uh, we have an if else condition now so again a sphere go here we type in equals that's always a good starting point 10 times sign of time so we have that swinging up and down now we edit that expression and we write type in if what is our condition say if um, time is less than five seconds then we want to have that swinging motion let's use the tab key in order to read it properly so if the time is less than five seconds we want a swinging motion up and down with a sign function else if the time is not less than five uh, we want that swinging motion be a random motion so let's copy this use the tab key again type in this I think we need a semicolon right here and right here but now we modify this the we want the translation y the up and down motion to be not a sign function but a random function and the random function is there's a tutorial I did about random functions in Maya um, uh, rand and then a round bracket and then the values between that swinging let's make it very small like from minus 0 0.2 and then a comma to plus 0 0.2 we close that round bracket and we're done so uh, until five seconds we should have a swinging motion up and down and afterwards we should have a random motion edit and let's have a look and that's the random function now if it's too little we can always change these parameters here like 7 and edit what we'll do now is um, we want to make that motion visible and uh, there are basically well, there's several ways to do this uh, one way is to go to the animation menu set here and here you have visualize and the top entry here is edit create editable motion trail so that's a motion trail now we have <laughs> a red line so that's the motion our object has and I think to make this a little bit more interesting uh, we can add another equation here equals sign 
well, let's say cosine four times cosine of time. Enter. Much more interesting, huh? So we have that motion now. It swings with in both dimensions, and now it sw swings back and forth, uh, forth in uh, in x, and does that random function in y. So the trails are just one method to make this visible here. In order to make it even more funky, let's type in equals random minus 10, comma 10, and close the bracket. So this is the, <laughs> this is what we have now. Very complex, of course. And from 10 seconds on, we have only the motion in X. And that swinging in, that randomness up and down, just little pieces up and down with a random function. Okay, um, how do we get rid of the motion trails? Well, like this. And how do we get rid of that massive swinging in this axis, in the Z axis? Well, we just delete that expression. Now, particles, fx, n particles, emit from object, and as before, we go to surface emission, go to the n particle shape, and tell it to not follow the solver gravity, ignore the solver gravity, and we can reduce the lifespan from live forever to a constant of maybe two seconds. And then we can hide the sphere, h, and run the simulation. So I hope this helps you a little bit to understand expressions and how easy they are to write. Much more easy than keyframing all this. Bye-bye.